to moms with swords, guys. How many of you, is there anybody that this is your new, your first week? Oh my gosh, yay! And tip to tear, yay! Oh my word! Okay, so we haven't scared too many. If y'all keep asking people to come, thank you, Jesus, not scaring too many away. We are so excited you're here. Let's jump right in. I'm excited to give this word. Yesterday was a whirlwind for me. I try to keep my Wednesdays kind of sacred um, because I'm running so much. Like I've said before, I think I'm running more now than I ever was when my kids were little. Sorry. I know you think it's going to get easier. Uh, It's just a different kind of easier. Um, So really busy, so I try to keep my Wednesdays sacred, and it got all kind of messed up yesterday. All kind, as again, if you were here the first week, I expected it, right? All you know what broke loose in my house between me and my sweet little 11 year old, and I promised her I would not tell on her because she texted me after she left the house. She said, You're gonna tell everybody about this morning, aren't you? <laughs> so I'm not telling you about the wonderful preteen fight that happened in my house this morning. So it was, it's been crazy. So I'm excited to teach this message because whenever there's a lot of resistance um, to me getting to teach and preach my, my message to my dog, Toby, you know, that's what I do on Wednesdays. I, I, I my dog, I bring him into my room and, and he tends to sleep and I am preaching and he sleeps. So um, I didn't get to preach to him yesterday. So I'm thinking he's probably, he, he's lost his opportunity to get saved once again, but um I'm excited to teach this message. Whenever there's a lot of resistance, I always know God's got a good, he's got a good word for somebody. So let's jump right in. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. If you have been here over these last few weeks, you know this is our verse. This is what we are basing this whole session on. Some of you probably have memorized it. Um, So we're going to focus on this verse for the rest of the weeks. Um, So let's read it. And now... Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, we talked about that last week. He is your Lord. He's not your mama's Lord or your granddaddy's Lord. He is your Lord. It is a personal taking. If you were here last week, it is a personal taking. If you weren't here, go back and listen to the podcast. You must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. So we've been talking about this concept of engrafted in, engrafted in. And I pray that now you kind of have an understanding of what that means for us as believers this picture of a knocking father. Remember, that's who, he's the knocking father in Revelation, and he stands at the door. And we have to personally open the door aggressively, some of us. How many of you have heard stories of, of men and women that are drug addicted or alcohol addicted or pornography addicted, and they were lost, and they just were, they were desperate for a change, and they aggressively took Christ as their Lord and their Savior? And remember, I said, and I'm believing this, I pray, God, I, some of you have, how many of you after last week really started going home and really praying that God would, would, that your kids would open the door to the knocking father, that you're praying for your kids to receive Jesus? I'm believing that that over these next few weeks, God, again, I, I'm plant, Sarah's going to plan on it. I don't know how we're going to work it in because it's already mapped out, but we're going to work it in. That there are kids that come, that, that you have the, the opportunity to, to walk them through that salvation moment with them. And that they open the door for themselves on Jesus, making him the owner of their lives. I believe that we're going to have that over these next few weeks. I believe God's going to give some of you that. As I like to call it, that is the ultimate mom goal. Not if your kid gets into Duke. Listen to me. Not if your kid gets the best academic or athletic scholarship known to man. Not if your kid excels in everything they do. Listen, those are all great. But those do not mean a hill of beans if they are separated from Jesus and from you. Mom goals. Your babies accepting Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. That's 
what it's about, mamas. Look at first, or 2 Timothy <clears throat> chapter 3. Oh, you know what, Anne? It's actually 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. I'm so sorry. When I was teaching this yesterday, I, it was in, I didn't know if I, I'm so sorry. So can you get that up there? No. Okay. Well, I'll summarize what it is. Oh, actually, I've got my Bible. Let me just read it. See, we don't need technology. We got the word. That's so my fault, Ann. I'm so sorry. So 2 Timothy 3, let me just read this to you. But understand this, that in these last days, in the last days will come, set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. Are we living in that time right now? Lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth. Proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents. Ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. Does this describe where we are at in our country, in our nation? They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. For although they hold a form of piety of true religion, listen, this is the scary part. They deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Meaning they're saying one thing but they're living another way. How dangerous is this? Avoid, listen, the Bible, the word, the infallible word of God that you base your life on. It is the foundation of foundations. The Bible says, avoid, avoid all such people. Turn away from them. Moms, these are the days we're in. These are the days that my children, your children, our grandchildren are growing up in. And if I do anything for you, I want to put a fire in you. That is my purpose. I want to put a fire under you saying, listen to what the days we are living in are like. So therefore, God needs to set us as mothers ablaze so that our children are foundationally solid. And we are doing our job in our homes of mothering, which is nurturing and directing and shepherding our children's hearts. Because the goal is that our children know Jesus and follow him. That is the goal. No matter what else you get told, no matter what culture reminds us and tells us is the goals, moms, that is the goal, knowing Jesus Knowing Jesus, it is simple. Today we're going to look at the second part of verse 6 of our theme verse, Colossians 2. We're going to look at that, that second part. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. We've been talking about engrafting, and today we're going to begin this conversation of rooting. Rooting a resolve is the, is the teaching today. Rooting a resolve. Rooted in the dictionary.com is firmly implanted. Firmly implanted, and some of its synonyms are fixed. Embedded, I love this one, ingrained, and I really love this one, radical. I would say as we listen to that, 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 that scripture that I just read, that we're going to need 
some firmly implanted kids. And I dare say, we desperately need some firmly implanted mamas. Because if the mamas are firmly implanted, guess what? It's highly likely the children will be. Because what mama does, the daughter does. What mama does, the son does. Do you understand your influence? That's a whole other teaching. I will not go there. What's coming at our kids, this cultural shift that's happening, this Babylonian society that we live in, and that our children are going to grow up in, we are going to need some radically rooted children. Some of you know there's three R's that I pray for my Sydney, my Sophie Kate, and my John William. There's three R's that I pray for them. I pray that they would be first repentful. Listen, I pray that God exposes the sin in my kids' hearts. Do you know that there's sin in your kids' hearts? Or do you just call it, oh, that's, that is that kid's influence on her. She is not like that. Or my kid does not do that. We got some mamas that need to take the blinders off because there is sin in those precious little two-year-old's hearts. <laughs> and let me tell you, that little sin in that cute little two-year-old, it ain't cute when they're 15. And it's a lot harder to unroot. You better see it, mamas. You better see it. I pray God expose the sin in their hearts. Bless my kids' hearts. I'm, I, 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 if something happens in, with, if something at school or something happens between, the, I'm like, what did you do? They can't catch a break because I'm constantly going, what did you do? Because I want God to expose that sin in their hearts while they're at home so I can shepherd it. And then I can lead them to a place called repentance. Man, I'm sorry for that pride. I'm sorry for that anger. I'm sorry for that complaining. A repentful heart is what I pray for my kids. And then I pray that they would be righteous kids. My Sydney, that is one of the biblical meanings of her name, righteous one. Oh, God, make my Sydney a righteous woman. Do you pray for your kids to be righteous? You know what that means? In right standing with God. Sin separates. But to be righteous is to be in right standing with God. God, make my kids righteous. And then lastly, I pray that my kids would be radical pursuers of Jesus in their generation. I want radical kids. I want kids that stand out of the crowd because we are, as the Bible says, to be in the world, but not of the world. Your kids should look different. Your kids' choices should look different. Listen, the way my daughter dresses, it looks different than some of her friends. You've got to ask the Lord, God, what do I need to do for this particular kid? Because every kid that does know Jesus should look different. Not better, not this comparison thing, but different. Their choices. Radical followers of Jesus. We need kids that are ingrained. Listen, ingrained in the word of God. And Ann had it up here. Listen, this is, I've, this is probably my all-time favorite definition. Ingrained means forming a part of the essence or the innermost being. Look at this. Difficult to change. Ingrained, forming a part of the essence or the inmost being, difficult to change. We get 18 years to do this, mamas. 
You get to do this in your home. You get to form something in those babies. You get to root something in your children. Listen, it was probably a hard morning for you to get here, and you're probably so glad that they are at school, and you are here, and you are alone for two hours. But listen, you get to do this. You get to root something in your children. And their generation is crying out for some resolved kids. Therefore, since that doesn't just happen, they don't just come out. What do they come out and say? Mine. They don't come out and say, Jesus, others first. They don't. The sin nature, they don't. So since that doesn't happen, guess what? You and I have a responsibility. It is our job. It is his job to engraft them in. And it is our privilege, not even a job, y'all. And look, sometimes it feels like a job, I will say. A lot of times it does. But it is a privilege. It is my greatest privilege Sydney is almost going to be 15 years old, and every time I find myself, I have to go pick her up, I have to go pick her up from school, I have to go pick her up, take her here, I think, oh my gosh, she's fixing to have keys. Really, oh my gosh. But guess what I don't get anymore, y'all? How many of you have eternal moments in your car with your kids? I won't get that, y'all. In less than a year, I'm going to be handing her the keys to her own car. So I get to go pick her up from softball practice 40 million times a week. I get to take her to the mall to meet up with friends or the avenues. I get to do that. And possibly along the way, we get to talk about her heart. You get to do that. It is our privilege. We get to be a part of this resolve that will not be shaken in our kids. And I want you to hear me say, if you don't hear me say anything else today, righteous kids, radical kids are possible. They are possible. I want to read out of one of my favorite books. If you have ever, you know, again, feed on many books, but live in the Word of God. This book is a feeding book, if you have ever read a book. And they actually have one, lies that young women believe. If you have young daughters, they possibly have one for sons. We're an eight-year-old, so we're we're, we're getting up there, but not yet. One of the best books I've ever read. And I just want to read something out of this book. Godly kids are possible. This author, Nancy Lee DeMoss, says in this book, this is, she, she pulls out some of the lies that, that we as women believe. And, and this particular chapter is the lies that women believe about children and raising children. She says, when I was 17 years old, my parents <clears throat> sent me across the United States to begin my junior year of college at a secular university in Southern California. Though I lived with a godly family for those last two years of college, all of a sudden I had more freedom than I had ever had in my life. I could have gone anywhere I wanted, and I could have done anything I wanted to do, but listen to what she says. My want to had already been shaped. I loved the Lord, and I wanted to do what I knew would please Him. My decisions were not driven by fear of what my parents would think, but rather by a strong sense of the presence and the holiness and the love of God. It is possible. During those years, I was exposed to philosophies and lifestyles that were foreign to me. But I didn't... I didn't have an appetite for anything that wasn't consistent with the Word of God. 
I had a heart for the people who believed those things and practiced those lifestyles and wanted to see them come to know the Lord. But their ways held no appeal to me. I had witnessed firsthand in my homes the blessings of fervent love for God and glad-hearted surrender to his ways that upbringing had cultivated in me a heart to please the Lord and to walk in truth. It is possible. It is possible for our kids to go to a party where alcohol and drugs are being served and our kids say, I'm leaving, see ya. Now, I'm not saying it will always happen. But I'm telling you, I'm believing it's going to happen. And I am doing everything I can do, along with the Holy Spirit, to ingrain my kids in the Word of God, to root them in the Word of God. So if they are in a situation like that, they do say, see ya. It is possible. I'm not saying it is a guarantee that they will never sin, because they probably will. They probably will do dumb stuff. That's not up to us. But according to God's word, his word never returns void. Never. So godly kids, righteous kids, kids that want to not please me. No, 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 Sydney, John William, and Sophie Kate. You are not pleasing mommy. This is the big thing we're having with John William right now. You don't do this to, because he's, a, he's the only boy and... And he's real high maintenance. I'll just say that. He, he, his probably, hopefully his future wife's mama is here. So I have to be careful of what I talk about her because she won't let Addison marry him. Um, <laughs> but he's real high maintenance. He's real high maintenance. But in, in that, it makes him real concerned with how I am and, and how I approve of him. So I'm really trying to ingrain in him now, not mommy's approval, God's approval. What does God think about that behavior, John William? It is possible. We're going to come back to that in a minute. That's too good to just go by too quick. But go with me to 2 Chronicles 15. This is where we're going to land. 2 Chronicles 15, the Old Testament. If you have those wonderful, do you know what's in the Bible? Did anybody go out and buy those? I heard on Amazon, somebody or somebody got a deal on like all of them. But somebody also said, if you have right now media, they're on there. The do you know what's in the Bible? So you know where Chronicles is because of the little song that they sing that's, oh my gosh, it's really kind of cute. Buck Denver sings it. Second Chronicles, the Old Testament. This is the story of King Asa. Asa was the third king of the kingdom of Judah and he was the fifth king of the house of David. And if you take Bethel, this, this, this session with Lori Newton, my friend Lori is going to be teaching Bethel, you're going to learn all about all of these kings. You're going to learn about them in depth. You're probably going to have to write a paper or two about them. Asa was the great-grandson of King Solomon, and he was succeeded by his son and one of my all-time favorite Bible characters and stories in the Bible, King Jehoshaphat. Asa's father was Abijah, and he held firmly to God. His reign was only three years, but his son Asa continued in his commitment to lead and follow after God. Asa ruled for 40 years, and upon Asa's time to rule, the nation was in the throes of paganism and idolatry, much like the world we live in today. The nation of Israel, it was not living up to the purposes God had for it. Does that sound like America? Not living up to the purposes of God. 19 kings, listen, 19 kings ruled Israel, which was the northern kingdom. And 19 ruled Judah, which was the southern kingdom. And listen, The Bible states that all kings of Israel, all 19, were evil. And among the kings of Judah, out of 19, 12 were evil. And only 8 were good. And Asa was one of them. 
Now, this background helps us in our reading. So let's read in 2 Chronicles, um, starting in chapter in 15 and starting in verse 1, and we're going to read to verse 17. Then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded, and he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from the battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Man, those are stark words. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach them and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, they found him. During those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nation fought against nation and city against city, for God was troubling them with every kind of problem. But as for you, Asa, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. And we're going to hear that be strong and courageous repeated in Joshua. You can go on, yeah. When Asa heard this message from Azariah the prophet, listen, He took courage and he removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns he had captured in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then Asa called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin along with the people of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon who had settled among them. For many from Israel had moved to Judah during Asa's reign when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. People will come when they see God is with somebody. The people gathered at Jerusalem in late spring during the 15th year of Asa's reign. And on that day they sacrificed to the Lord 700 cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from the plunder they had taken in the battle. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. They agreed that anyone who refused to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, would be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman. They shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with the trumpets blaring and the ram's horn sounding. All in Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all their heart. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him, and the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. And King Asa, listen, we're going to come back to this verse. He even disposed his grandmother, Maka, from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asher pole. He cut down her obscene pole, broke it up, and burned it in the Kidron Valley. And although the pagan shrines were not removed from Israel, Asa's heart remained completely faithful throughout his life. Now we see Asa back in verse 8. He heard these words that the prophet tells him. He heard these words, and and he knew that it would take courage. The prophet said, take courage. He knew it was going to take courage to stand up to the very people that he was ruling. He needed to stand up to the very people that he was in charge of, who had erected all of these idols. I would say Asa was very resolved. We're talking about rooting a resolve, and I think Asa was resolved the word resolve in the dictionary means decide firmly on a course of action. Asa was resolved. Asa was not afraid to make a resolve. He heard what God had spoken through this prophet, and guess what? He immediately obeyed, and he moved to action. Asa was very young. I I even text Lori Newton, you know, the Bethel scholar, my Bible love, I love going to her for knowledge. And I said, Lori, I couldn't find, I couldn't find how old was Asa because I really wanted to tell you how old he was because I know he was young. And Lori said, you can't find out how old he was, but it is, it is, everybody thinks he was young. And does he remind you of any other biblical character that was very resolved? What about Daniel? Some of you have little Daniels in your homes. Man, what a name to name your boy. Who does not want modern-day Daniels? 
Daniel 1.8. Daniel, he, he, he was resolved. But Daniel, look, resolved, which means he decided firmly on a course of action that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. It was that simple for Daniel and it was that simple for Asa. Look, you can either do it with God and God's way or you can do it without God your way. Asa believed what the prophet spoke. If you stay with the Lord, he's staying with you. But man, if you abandon him, guess what? You're on your own. Moms, we talked about it last week, John 15, 5. Apart from me, guess what? You can't do anything. Now, you might do a lot, but it doesn't mean a hill of beans. Because apart from me, all those things you're doing, they don't count for eternity. But with me by your side, even though it's hard, it counts for something. It's depositing something. Something eternal that, again, you might have to believe it before you see it. But if you believe it, I promise you one day you'll see it. We have lots of talk about culture in our home. As you can imagine, I have two olders. So we shield John William from a lot. But as you know, with a third child, good Lord, they know way more than my other two did. Todd's like, how does he know about that? I mean, he knows about things that... I won't shoot, I'm podcast, so I can't say it, but I would tell you something really funny, but I'll tell you afterwards when I'm not podcast. But he knows about things. He has sisters, if you know what I mean. So he knows about things. Or he thinks he knows about things. That's even funnier. You know, the funniest thing, John, when we sat down, we were at Chick-fil-A. Do y'all remember when the ice storm happened? That big ice storm? I couldn't get to Chick-fil-A for like two days. And you know, it's Jesus, then my family, then Disney, then Chick-fil-A. Speaking my language right there. So we couldn't get to Chick-fil-A, but Todd, I was like, you got to get us. So we drove on ice to the Chick-fil-A on 41. It was open. And we're sitting there, and John Williams said, I know what the S word is. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I said, John, what? I mean, as we're snickering, I'm like, what is it? He said, shat. I said, that's exactly what it is, shat. (laughs) Of course, he's been on the bus now, so he knows what that actual word is. But man, he knows a lot. So we have a lot of talks about culture and about media and about fashion and and how so much of it goes against the standards of the word of God. And and look, you're free to express yourself. I mean, now wait, you can't, you ain't having a tattoo until after you're out of my house. There's certain things you can't do in my house. But you're free to express yourself and and do whatever you're going to do. But I can tell you the words you speak and your actions, you're either going to do it with God or you're going to do it without him. There's no gray area, moms. There, there's just not a lot of gray area. You're either, you're either walking in the way of the Lord or you're not walking in the way of the Lord. Matthew 7, 24 says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. We want wise sons. We want wise daughters. So guess what? They got to build themselves on the rock that doesn't move. We have to build this resolve into them. A resolve that determines I'm going to go and do it God's way and with God. And planting this word, I said it just a second ago, planting this word in their heart is the only guarantee as parents we have. We don't know how he's going to work his word out in them. But we do know and have scriptural backing that he will work his word out in them. Isaiah 55, 11, if you've been around moms with swords for long, this is our verse. It is the same with my word. I send it out. He sends it out in the form of a mama in her house, speaking it over her baby. Listen what he says it's going to do. It always, does it say sometimes or just when they're three years old? 
it always produces fruit. Those do you know what's in the Bible, that's going through your car, it will accomplish all I want it to. That curriculum you're teaching your baby that's got those verses in there, it will prosper everywhere I send it. Hebrews 4.12, for the word that God speaks, and then you get to speak it in your home. For the word that God speaks is alive. It is full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, the soul, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting, analyzing and judging the very thoughts and the purposes of the heart. That is our guarantee, Proverbs 22, 6. You know this verse, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Do you know what that word train in its original Hebrew means? Dedicate. Are you dedicated, mom? Are you dedicated to get this word in your kids? 18 years is all you got. And I tell you, I'll tell you again, it's great that they're getting it at youth group. Oh, it's great. It is great that they're getting it in that Christian school. It is phenomenal that they're getting it in that curriculum you're teaching. It's great that they're in a Christian dance company or they've got a coach that's a Christian. That is all phenomenal, but it is not enough. Are you dedicated, dedicated Train up, dedicate, training up a child in the way he should go. Listen, the guarantee, and when he's old, he won't depart. Again, I don't care what you see them doing. You believe that he's working even when you don't see it. It is his job to work his word out in their heart. I know that our kids, my kids, I, my oldest, I, I, she is a little, sin is a little bit glittery to her I was like I like to describe it it's a little glittery and I I, I told y'all she's in a private Christian school and the Lord spoke to me because I told y'all too I didn't want her there I wanted her to go to our public school but one of the words the Lord gave me for my Sydney was I need to cocoon her for four years because I'm sending her out to a big college And I need her foundation. What you guys are giving her at home, I need it to be supplemented with a school that's going to supplement that. So it's not enough, but it adds to what you're already doing. Are you dedicated, mom? Dedicated. And we've got, what's, what's going on right now is we've got mamas who are giving their opinion on what the kids should do in situations instead of giving them what the word says they should do in the situations. Let me say that again. We've got mamas giving them their opinion on what they should do in that situation rather than a mama giving them what the word says they need to do in that situation. I, John William, it's not okay for you to say something mean back because he said something mean to you. Because, 1 Peter 3, 9. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That's what God has called you to do, John William. And look, he will grant you his blessing. Listen, Sophie Kate. It's not okay to gossip about that girl or listen to the gossip. Psalms 34, 13, this is why. Keep your tongue from evil, Sophie, and your lips from telling lies. And if you have a teenager, you will amen me on this. Sydney, it is not okay to wear that top because everybody else is wearing that top. Because 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says this. Oh, shoot. I got it. Your body is a temple. 
Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.19. Got it, got it, got it, got it. That's what it is, but let's read it in the Amplified. 6.19. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received, Sydney, as a gift from God? You're not your own. I'm sorry you can't go out of the house in that bikini top. That's not my opinion. That is what the word says. And that is a heck of a lot better than what I say. Now, I don't always fire back with the word. Sometimes I I start with possible fussing and then I get to the word. But I usually end on the word. Here's a very practical example. John, William, and Sophie were on the bus last May and they came home as they often did and, you know, had to tell me about everything. And they lo- we love the bus. The, we've never had any love the bus. It's so it's actually, I like the, I really love the, the things that come out of the bus. How many of you had some amazing conversations because of what happened on the bus? So we've actually had some really good words, good, some good things come from the bus. So they came home and, and the, John William, he's very animated. And he was saying um, that there were these boys behind him, mom. And they were saying the D word. And they were saying the S word. And Sophie Kate, I guess, was just a couple rows in front of him. And Sophie Kate said, yes. And I looked at John William. I said, John, you better come up here and sit with me. I guess she heard everything. You know, she's the big sister. So she's protecting him of the mouth of the South. Um, So she was probably keeping him from getting beat up. So Sophie Kate says, come up here and sit with me. And as... Uh, John William was going up to sit with Sophie Kate. He looked at the boys sitting beside these boys that were saying the D word and the S word. And he said, y'all better move because bad company corrupts good character. (laughs) That wasn't mama's opinion. That wasn't my opinion (laughs) on what John William should have done. Because I probably would have said, you should have pointed them. Jesus does not like bad words. <laughs> Turned them all off. John William just spouted back the word to them. Praise God. Why are we giving them our opinion on what they should do? John William didn't go to what mama thought he should do to boys that cuss. John William had that word implanted from a little boy because that's one of the things we say in our house a lot. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. John William, that was ingrained in him and he knew. Praise you, Lord. Pray that, Lord, he, he knows that at 14. Oh. And he's not the one saying the D word and the S word. (laughs) But this resolve, do you see where I'm getting at, moms? Rooting something in them. Look back at, at Asa in 2 Chronicles 15, 16. King Asa even disposed his grandmother Macca from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asher pole. He cut down her obscene pole, broke it up, and burned it in the Kindred Valley. He was willing to remove a blood relative because she was in the way of doing what he he knew he had to do, God's way. She was not doing it God's way, and that was in his way, so he removed her because his loyalty was to God and God's ways. I believe in our children's generation and in my grandchildren's generation and your grandchildren's generation, loyalties are going to come into question. They will more than likely have to walk away from friends. I was talking to my chiropractor last night. They had to walk away from a sports team because God told them to. Their loyalties are going to come into question. Possible uh, academic societies that they're a part of. They might have to walk away from something really good because guess what? They're not doing it God's way and with him. And look, I dare not say that's only for our kids to think about. 
Mom, are you going, are you on the path with God, doing it his way? Are there some friends maybe that are keeping you from that way? Now look, God's going to call you to some friends that don't do it God's way. I'm not saying run away from every ungodly influence that you have. I'm not saying that. Hear me. I don't think our kids, again, but we better know God's calling them to them. But I would dare say some of us have some TV shows possibly that are getting in the way of God's way and with God. And we're wondering why our prayers aren't answered. Look, that's the Holy Spirit's job to convict, right? I'm just simply throwing it out to us to think about. We're either doing it with God and his way or not. And sometimes there comes a cost, y'all. There are things that God's calling me to do now in my 44 years that are hard. That I don't really want to do. It's coming with a cost to do it his way. But guess what? My loyalty is to him. I've had to walk away from friendships. Listen, my kids, their decisions, they've got some decisions coming down the pike. And, and these decisions, I might really want that, that, it to be that. But i got to be willing that if God says, no, that's not my way, you got to go this way. Y'all, in my marriage, even with my husband, can I just tell you, and it's another story for another day, but my husband, the one I am married to today, 20 years, I'm the love of my life, my most undeserved gift, I didn't want to marry him. I wanted another person. I had to walk away from this person because I knew God's way and with God was with Todd. Your loyalty, mom, is to Jesus. And sometimes that is going to cause some loyalties to be divided. So you just let the Holy Spirit work. Because God's way isn't always the most comfortable way. And I can confess that the things he's asking me to do, it's not really what I want to do. But I know I want to do it with him, so I'm willing. I want my kids to know God's way is always best. My my middle child has recently found out that someone that she really loved is is getting a divorce or is already in a divorce. And she's so broken over this. And and that spurred on, again, in the car yesterday afternoon to talk about marriage and how, gosh, y'all got to pray for your husbands. You got to pray that God will direct you to your husband. You got to pray God's way and with God. As long as you are with God, will it be roses? No, but at least you're doing it with him. Asa. The Lord's going to stay with you as long as you stay with him. And whenever you seek him, he's going to be found. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Moms, let's root this resolve in our kids. But let's root this resolve in us. That we're, that our course of action is going to be with God and doing it God's ways. I will close with this story of a Comcast guy coming to my house. We moved into a new house in February and um, had to get the Comcast guy over there. And one of the things I've prayed, I don't pray it every day, but I do pray that the Lord will, when people come into our home, will feel something different. Does anybody else just pray that? Like, people will just know. I, I, I mean, I'll pray that for you, that people just know. When you leave moms with sores, when you've been in, again, this is God's presence. It's nothing I do. It's God's presence. That you just, people are like, wow, what, where have you been? I want some of that. It's like a fire, you know. It's like you're on fire and people are like, oh, gosh, it's warm. I want to get warm. So I pray that about our home. And so I had this Comcast man and actually... A dear, um, one of Sydney's coaches was at my house, and I was walking with her through some things. We were praying, and so I was kind of in and out, and I was humming. I, I'd come, and he was in the living room, the family room, and I'd be, I think I was humming, good, good father, and I was just humming it, you're a good, good father. And he looked over me, he's like, you're a good singer. 
And he's kind of like the guy on the airplane that you sit on the airplane and you don't want to talk, but somebody sits beside you and they want to talk. Like I quickly picked up, oh, he wants to talk. <laughs> and you would think I'm be, I'll just be honest with you, and I love you, and I will talk to you. But it's not, it's not an, as much as you think I would want to talk to a lot of people, I really don't. I'm pretty introverted. I kind of just want to go in my bedroom, watch Disney Channel, and eat my cereal. That's just kind of, and so I was like, oh. And I was already talking to this other girl. Like I was ready to talk to her. So he starts talking, and, and I go, you know, finally I break from the conversation. I'll see you in a minute. I go back out and start talking to my friend, and then I go back through. He said, yeah, you know, my, my fiancé, she doesn't believe in God, and she's my fiancé, and I, I just, I, my mama, you know, my mama loves Jesus, and she, she's a praying mama, and she's telling me I better not marry her. I better not marry her. I said, you better not marry her. And then I just, I, I kind of told him a little bit, I, I with God, God's way, buddy, you, you, hey, maybe just take a break. Just don't make that covenant yet. Maybe God has called you to her, but, but just, you know, just wait, wait, just wait. Make sure you know that you know that, that God is doing this. But, you know, the Bible talks about being unequally yoked. So just think about that, okay? Okay, see ya. <laughs> Go back out to my friend. And he, he's still there. It's like one of those, I got to go upstairs and do this, and then I'm going to come back down here. I'm like, okay talking to my friend. So he comes, finally he's done. And he comes out and he's like, well, I'm done. I said, thank you, thank you. My sister Julie had given us infinity. So I was having to sit on my porch to get any kind of internet. So I was like, thank you, you've saved us. He said, well, aren't you going to pray with me? I said, well, I guess I am. (laughs) Guys, we're either going to do it God's way and with God or we're not. Our kids, they're either going to do it with God or without him. Let's exhaust every effort we have, mamas. For the 18 years, we get the privilege of having them under our roof. Can we ingrain them? Can we make them so ingrained that, again, that they go to parties that are doing things, people are doing things they don't want to do, and they say, I love y'all. You know, not you're going to hell. I'm not saying that. I love y'all, but I'm going to call my mom right now. Or a boyfriend tries to take them upstairs. Mm -hmm. And they say, my body is a temple. My mama told me, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're not worth it. See ya. It's possible that their course of action would be so determined because of our efforts in our home that it's not easily changed. I'm going to ask the prayer team to go back. And I want to encourage you, Mom. This is heavy. I know. I wish I could be fluffier. Man, again, if you're mad, remember, take it up with Jesus. Because this is not my word. It's his. There is no condemnation. So listen, if you're sitting there feeling condemned, I'm not sitting here telling you that you got to go walk away from friends and stop reading I don't know, whatever novel or watching the Kardashians. Of course, God did remove. There is a mom in our midst that that God removed the Kardashians from her repertoire at night. I will not call her out. That's up to the Lord, right? Just like whatever you do with your kids, whatever, that's up to you and the Holy Spirit. But listen, if there's something bubbling right now, please don't not pay attention to that. If there's something bubbling, it's not indigestion or that you're ready to go to Chick-fil-A because we're going to go to Chick-fil-A after. Everybody go to Chick-fil-A after. We'll see you there. It's, you are probably hungry, but that's probably the Holy Spirit. And I would encourage you, Mom, it's never too late. If you have never prayed with your baby, if you have never prayed one scripture over your baby, please know it's never too late. God is a redeemer of the time. You can start today. And if you need somebody to pray with you, these people are lined up all across the back. Please, I will be back here. Come and let us pray with you. Ann, would you start them? Y'all start the music. We're going to start the music. We always, this is my favorite time of the whole morning. We can get to huddles when we get to huddles. The huddle leaders know that. This is eternal 
time right here. Last week, we had some mamas desperate praying. Man, Jesus was so satisfied. People were drinking from the living water. If you need prayer today, if you just want somebody to to pray and agree with you that your kids, maybe they are far off. Maybe you're not seeing any results from the words you've been planning. They're far off. You just need somebody to help agree with you just to remind you that God's word is working. You go and pray. We're going to sit in this space for a little bit. If you don't need prayer, you just sit there and you pray for your own self just quietly in your pew. And when you're ready, you go to huddle. But if you need prayer, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to let you just go wherever you need to go. But don't let this moment go if God's dealing with you about some stuff. Let's root this resolve in our kids. But moms, may it start with us. May it start with us. Jesus, you are welcome in this place, God. Your presence is felt, Father. I know you reside in this sanctuary, God. Thank you for the goodness of your mercies, God. The goodness of your faithfulness, God. The goodness of your righteousness, God. Your character alone, God. Thank you, Lord, that you would entrust us with babies that we get to root into you, God. Thank you, God, for the privilege, Lord. Some of us have been up all night with crying babies or sick babies, God. And today you're reminding us you get to do this to them. You get to tell them, to dazzle them, to show them my splendor and my majesty. God, remind us of the privilege that oftentimes feels like a job. And the devil would want nothing less than us to check in our mom card and let somebody else do it. Holy Spirit, would you awaken, would you kindle fires in these moms today? Would you burn a passion for us to be the one, the first one that gets to set our children ablaze with a love and a passion for Jesus? We get to do that. God, root this resolve in us. God, show us if there's loyalties that we need to be, we need to walk away from, God. Show us, Lord. Show me, God. Continue. I want you to do that, God. God, I want to do it your way. And your way oftentimes does not, it's not comfortable. It's not what I want to do. But God, would you, would you root that resolve in me and so many of these other moms? God, would you root that resolve first in us? So that our children see that our course of action is with God and God's ways. We confess it to you now. We are doing it with God and God's ways. Have your way in these next few moments, Holy Spirit. Have your way, have your way, have your way. And we seal it in Jesus' name. Amen.